Welcome to Math TV with Professor V. I have a new integral of the day for everyone. It's a definite integral from 0 to 4 of 1 over x squared minus x minus 2 dx. And if you want to try it on your own, pause the video, but I'm going to forewarn you, this is an improper integral. And you might say, oh, I didn't notice. Nothing about it immediately looks like it would be categorized as such but it's easier to spot once you factor the denominator. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so the denominator factors into x minus two times x plus one. And since the integrand, the integrand is the function you're integrating, it's a rational function, and it's not continuous at x equals two and x equals negative one. So x equals two, x equals negative one, our integrand is not continuous. Do either of those x values lie on the interval from which we're going to be evaluating this integral? Let's see. 0 to 4, yes. 2 is included in that interval. Negative 1, I don't have to worry about. It's outside the interval. So what do we do? Well, we're going to split up the integral. We're going to go 0 to 2 dx whoop, over x squared minus x minus 2 plus, and then you just pick back up where you left off, so you're going to go from 2 to 4, dx over x squared minus x minus 2. And then we're going to have to evaluate both of these integrals here, 1 and 2. If both converge, 1 and 2 converge, then we can say the overall integral that we started with, that will be a convergent integral. If one of these diverges, 1 or 2, then we're done. We don't have to finish the problem. We can just say that the original integral diverges. So here we go. Let's just start off with the first one. We have integral 0 to 2 dx over, and then remember this factors into x minus 2 times x plus 1. Here's integral number 1. So now what I do is I replace that upper limit where the discontinuity is with some sort of dummy variable. Usually we use t or you can use a, something like that. So we're going to rewrite it as the limit as t approaches 2 from the left. And then now we have integral 0 to t, yes, of dx over x minus 2 times x plus 1. And a lot of the time students get confused. How do you know if it's from the left or from the right? So what I would do if you're struggling with that, notice the limits of integration from here go from 0 to 2. So draw that out on the number line. Here's your little interval from 0 to 2. You have to stay within this interval. The only way to approach 2 is from the left. You can't come from the right. You'd be outside of the interval. So that's why it's from the left. If I had replaced the lower limit, I don't need to, right? 0 does not make the expression undefined. But had I replaced the lower limit, see how we're approaching from the right? So just draw yourself a little interval. Okay, now we have to see how are we going to evaluate this integral. Well, rational function seems like a great time to do some partial fraction decomposition. What do you say? Okay, partial fraction time. And notice both of the factors in the denominator are linear factors. They're not repeated. So the decomposition will have the form A, just a constant, over one of the factors, and then B, another constant over the other factor. So then multiply everybody by the LCD, which is x minus 2, x plus 1. And then we have here 1 equals a. If I distribute, x minus 2 cancels. So a times x plus 1 plus b times x minus 2. And then now we can do a different technique. We can let x equals negative 1. I chose that because that would make this whole factor a 0 and solve for one of the constants. So I'd have 1 equals a times 0 plus b times negative 1 minus 2. That's negative 3. So then b is negative 1 third. And then similarly, I'm going to let x equal positive 2. And then I have 1 equals a times 2 plus 1 plus b times 0. So a is positive 1 third. And I went through this pretty quickly. So if you still need help with partial fraction decomposition, just check out. I have all the links to my videos 
in the description of this video, okay, where I go into more depth. I'm just trying to work through this problem for entertainment and educational purposes today. All right, fabulous. A is one third, B is negative one third. I'm gonna rewrite now my integral with the constants and the decomposition that I have. You guys, you have to write lim every step of the way, okay? T goes to two from the left, zero to T, and then A is one third over x minus two, and then b was negative one third, so I'll write minus one third over x plus one dx, all right? Why don't we take those one thirds out? They don't need to be in there. I'm not particularly fond of them, so one third, and then we have here integral zero to t, one over x minus two minus one over x plus 1 dx. Okay, great. Both of these we should be able to anti-differentiate, no problem. Limit, t goes to 2 from the left, 1 third. We're going to have natural log absolute value x minus 2 minus natural log absolute value x plus 1. And then don't forget we have to evaluate from 0 to t. All right, very good. Now let's see here, let's plug in the limits and then keep cleaning up. So we have limit, t goes to two from the left of one third times natural log absolute value t minus two minus natural log absolute value t plus one. Now I'm gonna plug in zero, minus natural log absolute value zero minus two Minus a minus makes this plus, natural log absolute value zero plus one. Okay, so let's see. We have here the limit, t goes to two from the left, one third, natural log of t minus two. If t is going to two from the left, it's coming through values that are a wee bit smaller than two, like 1.9, 1.99. So this quantity is approaching zero through negative values, but thankfully we have the absolute value here to save us, which means that we're actually going to zero through positive values. Why is that such a big deal? Because if you'll remember, the domain of natural log is only from zero, not including zero, to positive infinity. So we can't even talk about approaching from the left of zero. The graph just simply doesn't exist there. So one zero is a key point to remember on the graph of ln of x, and it looks something like this. That's y equals ln of x, okay? Very good. So basically here, what's going on? This argument is approaching zero through positive values. So imagine you're on the graph of natural log, and you're going through, getting closer and closer to zero. The limit is the y value that you're approaching. Where are you going? Well, you're going to negative infinity, aren't you? So this term here is going to negative infinity. Hmm. And yes, there simply is no other way to evaluate this limit besides knowing the graph of natural log. Wow. Let's see what becomes of the rest of this problem. Then we have minus ln, t goes to two from the left, just this is gonna be two plus one, so no big deal, three minus ln of two, plus zero. So everything else is just a bunch of constants, right? Negative infinity minus a bunch of constants is still going to negative infinity. Even if I multiply by one third, it's still going to negative infinity, isn't it? So this limit is negative infinity. What does that tell us? If the limit is not a finite number, then that means the integral we just evaluated is divergent. So this means that the integral from zero to two of dx over x squared minus x minus two is divergent. And I don't even have to do integral number two now because if this one's divergent, that means that the original integral from zero to four dx over x squared minus x minus two is divergent also. So that's kind of good for us because it saves us some work, you know. And 
we didn't have to look at the other integral. Do you remember what it was? Let me go back in case you forgot what it looked like. This guy over here, we did not evaluate it. We don't need to. No matter what result we got, the, the answer is still the same. This improper integral is divergent. Even if this one, I don't know, if it had gone to positive infinity, negative infinity plus infinity, that doesn't cancel out. That's an indeterminate form. So this is still divergent no matter what. So lucky for us, we're done. <laughs> Only doing half the problem pretty much, although it took some thought. So if you forgot the graph of natural log of x, you're not alone, but maybe you just need to go back to my pre-calculus video lectures playlist and check out the sections on logarithms, okay? You don't need to know really like too much detail besides the vertical asymptote and then this key point, really. That'll, that's enough, that's enough. You do much fancier stuff with them in pre-calc, but to get this limit down, you just needed those basics, okay? I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And also please follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math TV with Professor V. If you found like there were some topics in here that I went through that you need more help with, then check out the playlist that I have on my YouTube channel. Everything's organized by courses and topics. I'm here to help. Thank you for your support. Love you all, and I'll be back soon.